Perfect. Okay, so good morning. This is the, um, what is, what class is this? This is COM 375 and IDT 590, Designing and Writing Interactive Texts. And it's a workshop, and James is here. He's bright and early at 9 a.m., and Cassandra's here. Chipper at 9 a.m., I can tell how happy she is. Um, Definitely. Yeah, but you have a class at 10, don't you? Yeah. That you have to get to. So we only have 50 minutes of your time. And I don't know, there's other people in your class too, but they haven't shown up yet. But that's yep. okay. Um, so why don't we go ahead and share your screen, Cassandra, because you're, the, you're, the, you're driving this. Really? Hang on. Yep. And I closed something that I needed. Oh, okay. And James, you've got this on gallery view, right? Correct. It shows yep. three heads up on the top and our restrictions up on the bottom. Yep. Okay. And so, Cassandra, you're going to – what I do in the workshops is whatever you want. Alrighty. And if you want anything, then I'll come up with something for you to do, which is basically the work of the class. So when you show up, you get to get all your work done in 50 minutes. That's a good thing. Yep. Okay. Do you want me to share my screen? I do. Um, there we go. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And now I remember you because you've got it all set up really nicely. So just to review, um, sorry about the noise. I'm in the city today. I'll wait till the truck goes by. So just to review, um, can you describe your your work situation here, Cassandra, how you've got your computer um, set up? Yeah, so far I just have the basic about me and then all of these links. I'm sorry, but, but just be just back up a step. So describe describe your two browser windows that you've got open that we're seeing in front of us and what, what the different wikis are that we're looking at. So the one on the left is to view it and then the one on the right is to edit it and the, the right is the Firefox. Okay, so on the right is Firefox with the lovely theme. Mm -hmm. What color is that? Like orange or? It's pink. Pink. It's a pink. Okay, so we'll call yeah. that pink. And it looks to me like, I guess they're cats, but they look to me like flying Oreos. They're cat. They're cookie cats. Cookie cats. I'm I'm so they're sort of like Oreo cats, right? Yep. Okay. So the Oreo, pink Oreos on the right is is... Firefox and notice just hover over the, the URL. It's file colon slash slash slash. That means we can write in it. And then on the left is your reading platform, and that's a different browser, probably that's Chrome. And notice it's dl.dropboxusercontent.com. And it looks like they're identical. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Excellent. Okay. So which um so go back to your TiddlyWiki on the right, your Firefox version. And um I just want to make sure that's not someone trying to get in the class. Actually Kira thinks the class is in Kinsella or something. Oh. I can email her though. Yeah, I just sent her a note to the group so everybody should see it. She'll be on sooner or later. Um but I, I want to do something that we haven't really talked much about. If you, um, under tools in the Firefox version, um, then there is control panel. So slide down to control and click on control panel. There. Okay. So now we can change your default tiddler. So why don't you copy, and you can copy this from Chrome if you want. But copy your named tiddler, Cassandra Huerta McDonald. This one? Yeah, just copy the name of that tiddler. Yep, and copy that and paste that into default tiddlers instead of getting started. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and then let's give yourself a username. So type in Cassandra, whatever you want to say, you know, whatever you're using. And you can put that whole thing as a username if you'd like as well. So just paste again. Where do you want to paste it? In the username? This one? Yeah. Okay, now what do you want to call your TiddlyWiki? Uh, My TiddlyWiki is not bad, but that's okay. You don't want to call it about, okay, that's fine. It's just this class, and you'll change that all the time. And give it a subtitle.
Okay, of course, this is the name of the whole tiddly wiki, not just the tiddler. Oh, okay. I don't know what it would be then. It would be uh, my adventures in design writing. There you go. Go with adventures. Ooh, very good. You get extra points. Yay. Yay. Um, okay, so that looks pretty good. And so now you can, um, you can make this full screen. And um, save your wiki because you made changes. And then where's your home button? Click on home right under tools there. Yeah. And now that's how it opens. Okay, so when someone comes to it and just opens it, that's what you're going to see first. All right. Okay, and um, click on control panel again. Uh. Okay, and then um, appearance and toolbars. And let's see, like click on page toolbar. And it's the middle one. Edit, yeah, there you go. So those are the tools that you see in the main page toolbar right under your subtitle. So right mm -hmm. now, if you notice, you're only seeing the ones that are clicked, which aren't, uh, should only be three, so there's not very many. There's new tiddler, that's the first one. And then there's the control panel, that's the second one, that's what we're working on now. And then there's the save changes, right? Mm -hmm. um, so let's say that you wanted to add home into that mix. So you can scroll up and find the, to, there it is. And you'll see that it shows up immediately. Did, did you see that? Yep. Okay. So, and then you can go to the view toolbar. And that's what you see when you open a tiddler. So you see the more button, the edit button, and the close button. And you don't have fold. If you want fold in yours, you can click those on and off. So you might play with that. So go ahead and add them in. And close others is good to have. I like that. And I like info out a little bit. Hi, Paul. How you doing? Hi, Steve. So we're just playing around with Cassandra's wiki here, and I'm showing her how to do a little bit of stuff in toolbars. Scroll up, Cassandra. And so you, she did tool. Uh, scroll up a little bit more. She's doing the control panel, appearance, toolbars, and we're playing with what shows up on the various toolbars. So it's a way of customizing it. And so this is a part of hypertext in that it, you're basically transcluding these tools into your toolbars. So, um, and you can click on edit toolbar as well. And um, you probably want all three of those, so we're gonna leave that there. And then click on theme. And if you wanted a different theme, you could choose that maybe brown, snow white, let's see what that looks like. Pretty minor differences, but you can get more themes. And click on theme tweaks. And this is where you get to mess around with stuff. You might want to be a little careful when you're messing around with this, but it will generally work. So you can put the, you can change all of these things if you'd like, and then go, go back up to do palette. And here's where you can change your color. So let's try um, rocker. I like rocker. Whoa, maybe not so much, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Dark photos, you know. Nah. Ooh. I think I like the contrast. <laughs> you no, know I don't. I think that's what I'm using. Solar flare. There we go. There we go. Okay. So anyway, you can pick these and of course you can sort it out however you'd like. Um, I think blue is pretty good. I like blue. Good enough. Okay. So now you want to save the changes because it's, you know, you change stuff. Um, you should just, yep. And it's all saved now. Um, and now close, click on the home button. And so this is what your tiddly wiki looks like when you start over again. Okay. Um, click on, and now this is a little weird, which I'm still figuring out. Click on recent. Okay. Now this is the way you leave your 
tiddlywinky. And even though the thing is not lit for save changes, go ahead and hit save changes just in case. Okay, and now minim, um, put your Firefox on the right and let's reload yours and just see if it looks what it looks like. Okay, um, and the thing about the menu tweak, you know, right now you've got your menu open by default um, and that's fine too. So if you um, make it wider or full screen, then we'll see what it looks like in full screen and you can play with it on, on your phone as well. Okay. Okay, so go back to your Firefox, and we can just keep them both full screen for now. We don't have to look at them side by side. Um, and so what I want to do today is walk through um, a couple of the exercises, and oh, we've got lots of people showed up. Okay, so um, hello, everybody. Hello, and I just, um, why don't you stop sharing your screen, and we'll just regroup since folks showed up, um, and let's see who's here and what they're doing. Um, Hi, Kira. Hello. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Paul. You already heard you, and that's it, right? Six of us, and hi, James. So um, this is the first of our workshop, the only one that we'll probably be doing online in Zoom. Um, so, Paul, you look like you're in an office somewhere. I'm in the classroom. Where? Okay. Oh, I see. You guys are all, where are you? Oh, you're in A113. Okay, cool. Nice chairs. Yeah, they're comfy. Yeah, good. Okay, so what I want to do here is basically what you guys want to do. So does anybody, I'll, I'll start these with, does anybody having serious or non-serious or trivial issues that they'd like to address before we move on and do something new? Um, does everybody have a wiki that works? Yeah? Okay, um, so where are you guys on the exercises that you're working on? So Kira, which ones have you done so far? I've just done uh, making about me tiddler and tagging. Okay, and Tyler, where are you? He doesn't have a working mic. Ah, uh, he should sit next to Kira. Everything's done though. Um, the only thing I haven't done is the green eggs and ham one. Okay. And Paul, where are you? I'm at the, I'm in the same boat. Okay. So, and so, and Cassandra, how about you? I haven't done the green eggs and ham thing yet. Okay. And James, you're at about the same place? Yeah, I just got to submit everything. Okay. So let's, um, somebody decide that they want to drive and they want to leave with half, with green eggs and ham halfway done. And, um, Share your screen, whoever gets their first wins or loses. So go ahead, somebody, one of you, pick the screen and share it, and you'll drive. Go for it, Paul. I don't think we've seen your screen. You wanna, and, um, and then the rest of you can follow along in your own hymnals. And so what you want, yep. And so Paul, you wanna open up your space um, on the one side. <coughs> Okay, and what are you writing in, Paul? Firefox. You're writing, so this is Firefox? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, your microphone got really weak. Is that better? That's much better. Okay, and so um, do, you have, do you have a, a piece of software that lets you see two windows side by side? Uh, yes. Oh, because you're on, you're on Windows, right? No, I have a Mac. Oh, you're on a Mac. Okay. So we've got one, and let's look at the design right on the other side, mine. Your screen got small, so I'm just trying to see both wikis at the same time, sort of like Cassandra's was set up. Is that, is that, is that look? Does it look okay? <clears throat> Oh. <clears throat> oh, I know why. Okay. Yes, there you go. Okay, so um, slide down to green eggs and ham and design right. Um, you can click it, you know, a thousand ways to get to it. Okay. And have you started this at all or no? Yeah. 
No, not yet. Okay. Um, that's fine, too. Um, so what we do in this, we treat the green eggs and ham as a text. And um, if you're not sure what a text is, you can click on that word text. And go ahead and do that, Paul, for us. But really briefly, we're thinking of a text as a corpus. And that's the body, the boundaries around which we're going to work with. Okay, so you can close that. And um, and what you want to do is find the full text of green eggs and ham. Have you found that anywhere or looked for it? Mm -mm. Well, you, you lost your video. That's it. Your, your picture there. I'll have to fix that. Um, so, Paul, do you have the, the full text of green eggs and ham anywhere? Uh, no. Um, does anybody have that handy? Um, there's a, it's out. It's lots of different places. Um, so why don't you search for that? Because that's actually one of the first things you're going to do. Um, there's the lyrics. That'll work. Brian Daniel. I don't get that. Got it, yeah, I got it. Is this the right one? That looks good enough. Uh, although I don't, I think their lines are, would you eat them in a box as a single line, right? But that's good. See if there's another one. That works pretty well. What are those links, by the way? Click on that. Are they not live, or they are? No, they are. What do they go to? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Or That's weird. So copy that text from the I am Sam, and just do the first five lines or so, you know, first ten lines or something. Keep going. Let's get down to the mouse part. To where? To the would you like them with the mask? There we go. And copy that and go back to your, your space and um, create a new tiddler and paste. Okay, and what are you going to call this? Okay, but you're going to have a bunch of those called green eggs and ham. So maybe you want to give it a descriptor like green eggs and ham text. Okay, and then let's tag this to green eggs and ham, for example, or just green eggs. And add that. So now you've got a tag called green eggs. Um, and then where did you get this text? Go back to that page and copy that URL. And um, in your space, um, make, can you make this full widescreen? And then scroll down and see under fields, and this is something that we haven't done much of yet. So in the field value, paste that link. And then in the field name, like, well, what is that link? The source. Okay. So you can type source. That's fine. Source URL, whatever you want, and add it. Okay, so now we've got that value called source, and what would that do for you? Um, just to show you what you might do at the very top of this, Hitler, right in front of I am Sam. And yeah, and just a couple of returns so we get some space to work with, and then go up, and let's say that we wanted to transclude the value of that source. So you insert the name of that field inside of double curly braces, And then two exclamation points, which means local, and then the name of the field, what you call it, source with a capital S, and then close it with two double braces. And so um, save the tiddler. I think, we, I think we need a save here to get that field in there. And it didn't work. So let's edit the tiddler again and scroll down. What do you call that field? Oh, okay. okay. And that's interesting. 
right? Because of, and I'm not sure why it doesn't get the full URL. That's a little annoying. But, so we might wait there. But that's a way of transcluding the value of the field in the current tip. So you can get rid of that. But you try to build things like this into your tableaus, you'll use them later. Okay, so here's your, here's your text. And um, just save that so that we know that we've got it. And, um, okay, what's next? So what's the assignment ask you to do? That. Okay. So what we want to do is try and figure out different ways to navigate this text, and we're going to spend like 15 minutes doing that. Okay, so go back to yours, and um, you want to play with it in terms of words and lines and maybe rhyming pairs, right? Um, so what do you think the first step would be? Anybody want to jump in with a guess? Like, how are you going to begin to work with this text? I stumped you all. I'm sorry. One time. So what happens in your room when you've got two mics open, and we're going to solve that for next week, James, when I have my little um, table mic. So um, I'll just keep talking since we've got a little bit of audio. Um, so the idea here, Paul, and for everyone else, is that you want to grab each one of those lines and make it a new tipper. Oh. It's all okay. feedback. That's all feedback because you got two open mics in the same room. So, Paul, copy the first line. Why don't you mute yours? Mm -hmm. Mute your mic. I did. Sure. Copy that first line, Paul. This one? Yeah, just copy that. And um, you want this all tagged to green eggs, which is the green eggs and ham text, or to neither? You don't know yet, right? I can barely hear you, Steve. Okay, if, you know, I'll see what I'll do is I'll mute everybody else. I'll mute all. Oh, nobody's open. Oh. <laughs> um, call one, two. Can you hear? Because I can hear. Can you? Try talking now, Paul. I'm talking, and so I don't know where you're. Can't hear you. you can't hear me at all. No. Hmm. Okay, everybody's muted. So, um, Paul, you're unmuted, and you guys should be able to turn up your speakers. Again. So I'll just mute Paul and I'll keep talking and I'll watch what he does on the screen. Okay. Um, so Paul, go ahead. You got that line. Create a new tiddler. And paste. Let's call this tiddler the name of that line. And let's tag it to green eggs. Which it should be right from there you go. And let's tag it to green egg lines. Green eggs lines. Okay, and then what does this line end with? Let's tag it to line end, um, am, you know, give it a sort of descriptive label like line end am or something like that. And you might have to play with that later. Okay, and um, that's good. Okay, so save this tiddler. Grab the next line, copy that, go back to the I am Sam I am tiddler and on the pull down toolbar there's a clone button. Okay, and replace the I am Sam Sam I am one. Yep, um, so double, triple click in there. Okay, you got it, right? Is that the whole line? Scroll down, is that what it's supposed to be? I can't remember. Yep, yep, that's good. 
Okay, and uh, do you have to change any of the tags? It still ends with am, right? It's still tagged every, okay, so that's, no, that's good, okay. So that's why we chose that. So we just cloned it, we changed it. Okay, now we've got two, and let's do the third line. Same strategy, scroll up to one of your other ones, do a pull down and clone it. And what the clone does is keep the tag and paste. And let's get rid of line end am with line end ham. Okay, and we'll do we'll do do that for five lines and I'll sit back and watch. Okay, so um, now you can click on the line end, or click on the green eggs lines tag, which is lots of places, and you see you have a list of all the different lines. Um, what order are they in? They're in the order in which they were created, I think. They're not in alphabetical order, so they're in the order in which they were created. Click on green eggs, and you should have a link to all the tiddlers in the green eggs project, and click, so, click on line end anywhere, and there's only one, right? So let's add a tagging to the rhyming pairs. So anywhere there, those rhyme, I guess, right? So what are you gonna tag then? You want those two lines to share a tag based on the rhyme. So you have to edit the tiddler, um, which is the middle button in yours, the little pencil button. Which one, the top one or this one? Either one. And we're gonna give them a common tag and let's call it rhyme. Um, I don't know, rhyme there, rhyme where, whatever. And add, and now tag the next one with rhyme there as well. Okay, and now click on rhyme there. Oh yeah, save it, and there should be two lines under that. Okay, um, interesting. And then let's go, how many more lines do we have? Um, let's do the ham and am rhyming pair. So add tags to the ham line and the am line. Okay, so now click on home button so we can just start over. And um, look at that, you saved that. So now what you're gonna do is um, find your green eggs tiddler, which you can search for and find the original one, green eggs. Click on the green eggs tag and just open that tiddler. And it's empty, so give us some text in it. And you can write, you know, this is my green eggs and ham project or whatever you want. Okay, and so the first thing we might wanna do on your project tiddler, hit it return a couple of times and say, here's the tiddlers that I've got for my project. And how are you gonna make a list of those tiddlers? Have you figured that out yet? You want that to code you gave us in the last project. Right? Yeah, there's a bunch of code and you probably got it under maybe creating tags. So I'm a big believer in cutting and post pasting. So it, yeah, maybe creating tags, you've got some code. Where is it? 
No. Oh, there we go, that one. Yep. Okay. So what that does, copy and paste that into your green eggs. And hit save because it's uh, just, just out of, um, the reason you're not seeing anything there is because it's showing you all the tiddlers that are tagged to the title of this tiddler, which is currently called Draft of Green Eggs. No. So if you save it, you'll see all the other ones show up. Okay. Um, so go back and let's edit this tiddler. And copy that code again. And then under that, say, um, couple of, maybe even before it. Um, way up above there, yeah. And let's say here are the tiddlers that rhyme with ham. And then paste your code. And this is a little weird, but get rid of the squirrely brackets, pound, pound, title, pound. Okay, and enclose it in brackets, single brackets. So type a single bracket now. And nope, a bracket, not a square bracket, sorry, not a curly brace. And then the name of that tipper, if I remember, was um, Green Eggs Rhyme Ham or something like that. I can't remember what you called it. Rhyme Ham. And get rid of that, yeah. Okay, so, and close this, and let's look and see what we've made so far. Now, if you had the full text, you'd have a full poem written in sequence, not in the sequence that Dr. Seuss shared with us, but in the sequence on the basis of rhyming. And if you go ahead and edit that tiddler and change ham to, what was it, where or there or something like that, That's kind of interesting, right? And so what this does is allows you to, as a writer, anticipate what your readers are going to see, and then just edit each other one more time. Um, you want to edit the Green Eggs Tiddler. Uh-oh, did I lose your video? So go ahead and edit the Green Eggs Tiddler. Is it open? My video, there it is, okay. And so, um, and highlight that list links filter tag rhyme there, that line of code. Yep, highlight that and copy it. And then um, above the here, paste it again. And then insert it in, or enclose it in back tip, which is the, your left pinky. Steve, I lost you. Can't hear you. You want to fly through this? Yeah. Am I the only one who can hear? No, I can't hear him either. I can't hear him. We can't hear Steve. According to Steve, you got to put backpacks around the code, back ticks. There, got it? Now we can hear you. Okay, now you can hear me. So, Paul, put back ticks around that. Okay, and what that does is make it red, which means it's not going to be interpreted. So inside of those back ticks, 
you can write some notes. And you're beginning to see me do that throughout. So you can write and say, here's, I'm going to, you know, here's one way to view it or whatever you want to do. And what I would suggest is that when you write that code and you choose to put the tag line there in there, that's called writing to me. That's not reading. That's not coding. That's writing. And you're making a decision as a writer of what your readers are going to see, which is all you ever do when you write is make decisions about what your readers are going to see. This is a new, different kind of way of writing, but I would argue that you want to be as cognizant of what your readers will see as you are when you're writing a standard paragraph. The difference is, is that they don't see what you type, they see what you think. That's profound. So I think that's enough, I'll leave you there. Um, so, the last thing you'd want to do here is, is when you um, um, go ahead and look in your, your version of this on Dropbox. So that's going to be in your other browser probably or wherever you'd like to see it. Okay, yeah, you can refresh it, click on green eggs, and then you can save the permalink under the tool. And that's the one that you paste in the project when I, if there is, yeah, whenever you're ready for it. Okay. Um, does that help you guys figure out what you're trying to do? Should we do one more set of things there? Um, pick the, um, would you like them here or there? That one, yep. That line. And you could tag this tiddler to would you not not would you would and you and then so maybe word would would be better and then add word you add word like, and this is annoying, so you're not going to want to do it too many times, but it's worth doing once. And then you can imagine as you do the whole poem that all of the lines with the word like will show up in that list. So then you can navigate the poem through many different sequences by word, by line, by line pair. Um, if you did the first 10 lines of the poem, that'll probably be enough for you. Um, Oh, you want to figure out what you do? So edit your code in green eggs. That's where you're sort of building all your interesting stuff. Um, copy that last link. Here are the tiddlers. You know, copy one of those. Do the rhyme there so you don't have to mess with the exclamation points. Copy that and um, paste that again. And replace rhyme there with word word. Uh, maybe hit, uh, yeah. And you put them. So, what you're doing is you're documenting in your green eggs to there are all the different ways that you can create entry into this poem. What's the right way to read the poem? Um, Paul, you can stop sharing your screen now. We'll just talk for about five minutes and then we'll end our, our class will be over. What's the right way to, to, to read this poem? That's a trick question. Sorry about the background noise. I'm going to mute my uh, stuff. So, um, somebody open up a mic, gather around it so we can hear Tyler talk, and then tell me about the right way and the wrong way to read the poem. Isn't it reading it backwards or something like the right way to read it? Explain. I remember reading it backwards in like seventh grade and there was like something funny about it, but I don't remember what it was because it was like a, like an anagram or something like that. Here, what's the right way to read it? I want to say start to finish. 
Oh. Does it matter? Cassandra? Every way you can think of. James? They all sound good to me. All right, you guys are all lame. No, Cassandra's right, and I, Kira's wrong, Paul's right, and Tyler's wrong. And James is just non-committal and won't play. Um, so here's why I would argue that Kira and Tyler are wrong, because I asked the trick question, what's the right way to read it? And at least in this class, and I think in this century, there is no right way. So we're sort of a postmodern, post-sequential society um, in that there's no defined right and wrong, there's no defined way to do things, it's how you approach it. That's very much a modernist, postmodern conception. Um, and what Tidney and other forms of hypertext do is put the power in the reader to choose their own path. And so you as a writer might try to guide people into different paths. And what Paul was doing in his project was saying, hey, why don't you read it by the rhyming pairs instead of in the order that, that Dr. Seuss guy wrote it? Or why don't you read it in, you know, alphabetically, whatever you want as a reader, I'm going to make it possible for you to do. And so the whole point of this exercise is to play with text that only has 50 words, see how many paths you can construct through that 10 lines or so that you decide to build, and kind of see what happens. There's no, here, when I was teasing you about being wrong, you're not wrong that you should read it the way that the author intended if you believe in that sort of authoritarian type of society where children should do what they're told, readers should do what they're told. Huh? Wrong in this class. Yeah. Because <laughs> this class is about anti-authoritarianism and about not, not, following sequences that others have created for us, but about empowering our readers to follow whatever sequences they want to. It's not a, um, and I, we're way overboard in terms of emphasizing that when we start, and then you'll see as we get closer, my tune will change, as we get closer to the end of the semester, in the second half of the semester, my tune will change a lot, and I'll say, you've got to provide clues to your readers as the ways that you want to guide them, because as a writer, you're a guide. It doesn't mean that they're going to do the wrong thing, but they might do things that you don't expect them to do. So right now it's about creating paths, playing with the silly text, and uh, and moving forward. So, um, so I'm going to, why don't we stop that, James? You can stop your recording. I'm going to stop.